Hello students, I'm Jan and today we're going to talk about binary files. This is an entry in our fundamental series um, to uh, approach this class you should really already have this knowledge. In case there are gaps in your knowledge this should hopefully fill them in but if you are really lost throughout this whole uh, video please go back and make sure you know this material before taking this course. All right, let's roll. We're gonna be talking about bin cat. Bin cat is, again, the Linux utility um, for and related systems. What? Bin cat? What, what's going on? Okay, bin cat is nice and simple, it just echo stuff out at you if we we'll actually instead of bin cat be using our replacement little cat that we wrote so we can mess around with it in in clever ways um our replacement prints some silly string and then um writes out the uh uh file that it was given to write out you can also do other files and standard in. Very cool So, Anyways, this is uh, that bin cat is a program that is compiled from C into what is called an elf file. So what is an elf file? Um, an elf file stands for executable and linkable format defines a program as it will be loaded and executed uh, in memory, right? So it, it defines it at rest on disk and uh, enables its execution. Um, ELF it stores a whole bunch of uh, data about a program. Um, for example, what uh, architecture is compiled for. So this is a 64-bit ELF for x86. Um, and of course, you know, identifies itself as an elf and so forth on other architectures um, or on other operating systems there are other formats for um, executable so on linux it's an elf freebsd uh, also on um, windows executables are uh, what are known as pe files portable executables on mac os it's mac o um, and so on so elf and related formats, they're, they're all more or less similar. They all allow um, a compiler or, or, or something to create uh, and, and, and define a program. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, what does an ELF contain? An ELF contains a bunch of stuff, but mostly you can have two views into itself. One of them is um, how it should be loaded and executed. And another one is uh, more semantic information about what the data inside it is. Um, let's talk about the first one first. Uh, these are called program headers and they define what are called segments. Segments is the parts of an ELF file that are loaded into the memory of a computer when that file is executed. And there are two main ones. Let's take a look, or two main types. Let's take a look. Um, so we can look at headers with the read elf utility. You can parse out an elf and, and, and tell you everything you wanted to know about it. Um, let's look at cat. Our cat here is uh, pretty simple. Scroll all the way up first. First things first, all elves start with um, the bytes in hexadecimal 7f, 4.5, 4c, 4.6. You should be able to recognize that in ASCII encoding, this spells ELF. So an ELF starts with 7F ELF. Very cool. This is actually how file recognizes that it's an ELF. Um, then it defines a bunch of stuff in the, the header format that it's 64 bit, as we discussed, etc. One thing I'll point out is it defines its entry point. So execution will actually begin after the ELF is loaded into memory at 10E0. I talk about the loading and execution in a later part of the uh, fundamental series, but 
let's move on to the program headers. So program headers define segments that will be loaded in memory. Um, there are uh, four of them here, right? One, uh, this uh, first segment starts at the very beginning of the file. So it's offset, then the file size. Then this is from inside the file. How many, much data will be loaded from which location? And then here it is uh, how much will be actually stored in memory and where. Um, the virtual address, and I'll talk more in the about this in the loading um, uh, video, but uh, the virtual address nowadays for modern uh, software on a modern computer um, is randomized in memory to make the program a little more secure and more resilient to certain classes of attack. Um, and this is an offset from that location. So um, at the beginning of the file, there are hexadecimal 700 bytes. This is uh, 700 and base 16 that are loaded to the beginning first 700 bytes of um, um, memory uh, where wherever this file is chosen to be located. Then uh, there is at an offset of hexadecimal 1000, which is actually four kilobytes in uh, decimal. Um, also four kilobytes in, that is the size of one page. We'll talk about pages and virtual memory and so forth um, in a later module. We load 335 uh, in hexadecimal bytes and so on for the rest of these. One thing I'll, I'll mention is the permissions of this data are different. So the first data that's loaded is just loaded in as, as readable data. This hex 335 is loaded as readable and executable um, and then there's one that's loaded as readable and one that's loaded as readable and writable. This is important later. We'll see um, that this different data uh, or these different segments contain different types of data. Um, it's important to mention that these segments defined by program headers are the only source of um, are the source of information, the ground truth for loading this L file. Um, you can build an L file that has nothing but program headers. It'll, it's gonna be a very broken L file, but everything else I discuss from now on, it'll be broken, but it will run. Everything else I'll discuss from now on is uh, more or less you know, optional uh, fluff to make our lives easier. Um, one other thing, this interp header um, is a very interesting one. Um, it, you can see it right here in the output of readout. And interp says, okay, this doesn't, it's not a load directive, so it doesn't load anything into memory or cause anything to be loaded into memory. But it says that at hex 318 in the file, there is some data 1c in size. Uh, one second. I'm back. Sorry, I had to let my cat out of the room. He was stuck. Um, at uh, there's a, a some data hex 1c in size that specifies the library that is going to load or help load our file into memory. I'll talk about this at length in um, when I talk about loading of, of these executables. Um, but for now, let me show you in a program called Kaitai struct um, what this looks like. So this is Kaitai struct. It's a web-based ID um, for looking at, uh, or web-based program for looking at um, structured files, such as executables, but also things like uh, PNGs, zip files, etc. Um, so let's upload our uh, cat file, open it up. It's opening it as a key. Oh, there's not an elf. Here's an elf. Okay. So it parsed it as an elf. We can drill into, um, so again, here is, you know, the magic numbers. You can see a hex view on the side here. Here's 7F and then you see ELF. Awesome. Um, let's dig in to this interpreter. We see this interpreter has an offset of 318. Um, and if you scroll in 318 here, 
we see this is exactly the path um, of the interpreter of, of, of the loader that will be responsible for loading um, this file and its dependencies. Cool. Okay. Um, let's move on from segments and, and program headers to section headers. Um, I just realized that it was the previous slide good. The previous slide was good. Oops. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to hide my camera so you can see the slide properly. Um, boom. Okay. I'll be right back. Don't worry. So, um, section headers. Uh, section headers represent a different view into an L file. Uh, it's a view that has a lot more um, uh, semantic information and is less important for the actual loading process. Um, like I said, I, there, I've seen ELFs that don't have section headers at all. Uh, generally speaking, they are um, you know, not very fun to work with. I'm not actually sure that you could have a dynamically loaded ELF without section headers, but it, it might be possible. Anyways, um, sections define what the, the, the parts of segments, what the segments actually have inside them, not from a data perspective, but from a you know meaning perspective. But that meaning is only really important for the most part to um, reversing tools, debugging tools, and, and introspection of the ELF and, and tools to uh, you know manage ELFs. Um, so let's um, walk through, I'm back, let's walk through um, the uh, important ones, the, uh, some important sections. There's the text section. It has the executable um, code. It's not text as in English text. It is the binary, the compiled source code or assembled assembly code of your program that will be executed. Um, dot plt and dot got are used to resolve and dispatch uh, library calls that you use in your program um, for example if your c program calls printf there will be a stub created for printf in dot plt which is a, a section of code we'll take a look in a second um, at it at a high level and we'll look more in depth at this in a future module um, there's a stub there the first time you call uh, printf that stub will run um, initiate the process of resolving where in, in uh, the library in libc uh, and the specific version of libc you have loaded and so forth uh, printf is then it will find that address store it in the got um, which will be used to resolve and dispatch or which will be used to cache that location to make this process um, faster together plt and got are sections that are used to resolve and dispatch library calls um, Again, at runtime, the PLT doesn't care about the you know name GOT of a section. It just has an offset hard coded in. So if you load them properly, which is defined in the segment headers, they'll work. Um, data. Uh, there are three types of data sections that are defined. One is dot data. It is defined. It, it defines global writable data that has an initial value in the file. So when you load something into memory, it already has an initial value. This is if your C code has um, uh, some sort of hard coded array in it, for example, that you can then later edit a uh, global array. Um, dot RO data is similar, but for read only data. Um, so this is, for example, in our version of what is going on with my shell? Okay, hold on, I'm gonna, wow, I broke something, okay. So here's cat, you saw that cat prints ha ha, that's this good, right now it prints ha ha before it prints anything out, uh, does its, its cat thing. This ha ha is read only data that will be stored in the RO data uh, section, we'll uh, mess with that in a second. Um, and then there's the BSS, which is used for storing uninitialized writable data that's global, right? So a, an array uh, defined in your C code that doesn't have um, 
uh, an, an initial uh, value, right? The idea is if you just de define a giant array in your C code, it doesn't have initial value, there's no reason for that array to take up any space in the L file. It's just a waste of, of, of file size. So instead that is rather than being loaded from the file, it's just allocated with all zeros. All right, um, I specifically mentioned that already section headers are not, um, let me uh, disappear so you can read this. Um, section headers are not a necessary part of the ELF. Uh, I mean, uh, realistically, almost every ELF you'll ever interact with will have them, but they are not strictly necessary. An ELF can exist um, without uh, section headers. They are mostly just metadata. All right. Symbols and symbol resolution. Again, let me disappear for a second so you can see that link. Um, elves have um, symbols, which means you know names essentially that they use names that that rely to constructs of other uh, uh, libraries such as you know functions and um, um, variables exported by those libraries that they use to you know find. Um, uh, libraries of, of correct versions, resolve functions in them, and so forth. This is a very convoluted process involving multiple tables, offsets into other tables, tables of strings, etc. Um, I highly recommend this um, uh, blog post uh, series. I'll, I'll have another link to there um, in a second. Uh, but it, it really describes in very in-depth detail um, how all of this works. Um, you can uh, uh, take a look um, and if you're very interested, but you don't, you won't need to interact with L files in so, so much depth in this class. Um, this diagram, for example, is taken from this uh, uh, series of blog posts. All right, how do you interact with your ELF? Um, well, there's a ton, tons and tons of tools that you can use to interact with your ELF. We already saw Kai Tai struct, saw me clicking around and looking at, at, at parts of the ELF. Um, you, of course, make the ELF with GCC. You saw me use read ELF. Um, let me show you real quick um, NM being used. So this uh, NM is a utility that reads symbols uh, from the ELF file. So dash D, for example, is how to resolve, uh, to um, look at all of the uh, dynamic imports. So these are functions that the uh, program, this program will use at runtime. So you can see open, puts, read, and write. Um, libc start main is something I'll talk about in a future um, uh, um, video. It's used to initialize or to, to begin execution. I'll talk about it later. Um, what oh, you can of course look at you know more symbols so these are all the symbols including symbols that the binary defines so for example we can probably find the address of main yeah so here's the address of main at this 11c9 shortly after the entry point and we'll discuss why at a later time um patch elf is a cool utility um, that can mess with your elf in weird ways. Um, you can inject different libraries that are that are going to be needed to be loaded, um, change around that interpreter that I mentioned, and so on. Um, Opt copy is pretty cool. Um, Opt copy can allow you to export, mess with, and then import um, sections. Right. So let's dump out this. Uh, uh, section of cat the ro data if you recall that is the read only data and that read only data has this haha -ha in it right so if you look at what we just dumped out <laughs> it prints out the haha -ha and then it's the hard let's let's take a look at the cat dump uh hex dump all right this is what was in the read only data um section Guess there was some other read-only data, and then there was the string in in ASCII, of course. Ha ha! Exclamation point. Interestingly, oops. If we look at, we grab vim and we change this to something like hello, and then instead of dump section, we do update section. 
to read in that file and 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 um, write it to uh, into that that section in cat we just modified this file if we do cat now it'll print hello even though the original source code had haha um, just as full disclosure you don't need to export if, if, if it's a simple edit like that I could just modify the binary itself vi b enables binary mode in vim and disables some things that might mess up the binary during editing but this is super super um, uh, simple like I can go and look at where hello is and say bye and now and say bye but of course it's a little friendlier to do it on the um, section one section at a time we also use object copy later for um, help when we're writing shell code and stuff um, all right in later modules the final thing um, there's a bunch of symbols here they help with debugging and so forth but they take up space um, and might give people more information than you want them to have as your binary you can use strip um, to strip them away to to remove them strip cat it's gone okay um, strip has a ton of different options that you can strip out more and more things remove whole sections and so forth we're not gonna go into them um, and this is it again I highly recommend this series of uh, posts digging into the L format um, and I hope that this was useful that you now know elves like the back of your hand and that it'll help throughout the course see you in the future